Was I even needing a gear upgrade? Stick around and find out what's in the camera bag this year. Hello and welcome everybody to another episode of this thing I call Chosen Idea. For those of you who haven't been here before, my name is Marco. I'm a creative generalist. All that means is I've been lucky enough to get paid to do a bunch of creative stuff throughout my career. I've learned some things along the way and now it's my chance to pass those things along to you guys. Maybe learn a thing or two myself. Anyways, let me preface this episode by saying that the world is awash with people in the prosumer photo video market that are spending a ton of money on equipment that will do little if anything at all to improve the work that they do. Now the fact is that billions of dollars have been spent on creating this buyer's climate and the reason is that manufacturers know that there just aren't enough professionals to support an entire market segment. Well professionals are probably just as likely victims of gas as the rest of us, although I'd hope that their decisions are more based in reality since they're supposed to be making money with the equipment that they buy. Cost-benefit analysis isn't exactly the most popular topic amongst this artsy type, so I'll try not to put you to sleep. Although if you are one of those people who feels you need a backup camera on your family vacation at Disneyland that isn't your camera phone, then I can't really help you. I used to be a contributor to the brainwashing that created you, and I'm sorry for that, and I'm not really proud of it. To go full frame or not to go full frame? That is the question. At least that's been the question that's been all over the internet lately. You've probably heard enough of it, so I'll try to be brief, as brief as I can be. Those of you who know me know I have a problem with being brief. Anyway, as a longtime Sony shooter, you could probably guess that my conundrum focused on the ever so popular A7 III. Now, I had just bought the A6400, which I hadn't been shooting for very long with when the A6600 was released. You got the longer battery, but for not a lot of money more, at least in relative terms, you could get the A7 III with all its full frame benefits, dual card slots, low light performance, stabilization, that's arguably better than it would be in an APS-C camera. The most expensive lens that I have was definitely going to factor into the buying decision that I made because I was going to either have to stick with it or find a comparable replacement for it. That lens is the Sony 70-300G. It is a beautiful full frame lens that has got optics that are definitely good enough for me and the stabilization is awesome. You're probably wondering why I wouldn't go with something that's got a larger aperture, one of those big white lenses. The answer would be uh, form factor uh, and cost. Definitely cost. Probably at the top of the list cost. But form factor, I'm not going to be able to put that in the camera bag with everything else. And those of you who've seen my other videos know that it's very important to me that I get everything into the same bag. Almost as popular on the internet as the discussion between whether you go full frame or not is the discussion about whether or not you get rid of your primes for the Tamron 28-75. to I did get rid of my primes for the 28-75 to and um, I actually missed my primes as soon as I did. I really like the 28-75, to it's a beautiful lens, super sharp and very convenient, especially for those shooters that are doing uh, weddings or any paid shoot where you don't necessarily have the time to swap lenses out. But I did really miss my primes, so I knew whether or not I was going to be sticking with APS-C or not, I would definitely be getting rid of the Tamron to buy back some of my fast primes or perhaps look at some new ones. That's always exciting. Well, you can probably see where I was going with all this. I did go full frame and I did go with Sony's a7 III. I also got some new video lights in here which I'll cover in another episode. About episodes, this is the first episode shot with the Sony a7 III. Most of my other episodes were shot with the a6200 and there was a couple episodes in between there that I shot with the a6400. 
Most of the A6200 videos were shot with the uh, Sigma, the beautiful Sigma 30mm f1.4 Contemporary. And the videos that I shot, or the episodes that I shot with the A6400 were with that Tamron. I used the Tamron to get rid of my 85mm Sony portrait lens and that beautiful Sigma 30mm f1.4 Contemporary. Now what am I using on my full frame camera right now? That would be the beautiful 35mm 1.8 from Sony. Super tack sharp and roughly uh, the same framing of course as what I had before on APS-C. And it's also pretty good for macro stuff too because it's got a very close focusing distance and if I throw some extension tubes on there, I can uh, get really down to details as well. So just a point for uh, anybody considering the Sony 35mm 1.8. A lens that my Tamron wasn't going to replace was the lens I used to shoot my wide stuff with. And that's the 16mm Sigma 1.4. It's a beautiful lens, but unfortunately very heavy. And so moving from APS-C to full frame, one of my uh, requirements was that I find a wide angle lens that be a little bit smaller and lighter. It's a big ask considering I'm going from APS-C to full frame and wanting a smaller, lighter wide angle lens because typically the decent wide angle lenses for full frame are pretty large. And not only that, but they don't even accept standard uh, filters which is something that I really want because I'll be doing landscape work and I don't want to carry around a filter frame system. And I also wanted uh, autofocus, which uh, you can't get in every uh, lens that um, fulfilled all the other requirements. And what I came up with, believe it or not, was this little Samyang that comes in this semi-hard case. Now this little guy here optically is actually quite good considering how crazy lightweight it is. It's a perfect little gimbal lens. Um, the only downside really being is the fact that the, uh, the lens hood's a little chintzy, but uh, for my purposes, it's perfect. The autofocus is fast enough. I'm not gonna be shooting sports or anything with this, but for the landscape stuff I'm doing and the occasional interior stuff, it's, uh, it's a 2.8, so it's bright enough for me. Not too bad. For those of you who've been following me, you probably remember my friend Mark. He's the guy who came with me to Iceland the last time I was there. By the way, I might be going back again in May. I hope I'll be going back again in May with my girlfriend Marmar. Not sure if that's gonna happen uh, because of this whole pandemic thing. We do have everything booked. Mark had suggested I buy the 85 millimeter 1.8 from Sony, the lens everybody was comparing uh, G Masters to and everything. Excellent optical quality, a value definitely for portrait shooters, but I'm not a portrait shooter. And I was excited about the idea of having the lens uh, prior to him even saying anything. And he was the one who sort of sold me on buying it, and I did. And I had it with me when we were in Iceland together, shot all kinds of stuff with it. I found it really useful and a really fun lens to shoot with. Now, when I bought the Tamron, I thought to myself, well, I can do my portrait stuff with that if I had to do portrait stuff. I'm gonna get rid of the Sony. I did, and I regretted that as soon as I got rid of it. Um, I missed it ever since I got rid of it, and I bought that back immediately once I got rid of the Tamron. So the amazing 85 millimeter 1.8 Sony will be coming back with me to Iceland if we manage to get there. It came in really handy just recently. My friend who I actually work with sometimes as well, his name is Michael, he's got a band called Rain Dogs and there was a night where uh, they were doing a gig, he's the drummer, and I went out with the 85 millimeter and it was the perfect focal length for the venue because it's a place that was too small to have anything more than an 85 millimeter and having that 85 was enough reach, I could get in for some nice close-ups and then, you know, taking a few steps back, I could still get the whole band in. And that bright 1.8 aperture was absolutely perfect for the low light conditions in there. And of course, the amazing low light performance of the a7 III. 
Since my last What's In My Bag episode, I've also swapped out the drone I have for something smaller, something that would fit in my camera bag with all my other equipment, and it's the Mavic Air. I used to have the big uh, gray Mavic. Uh, now, as many of you know, um, there isn't much of a sacrifice as far as image quality goes, and I even get the bump up to 100 megabits recording, which is on par with my other devices, even my Sony action camera, which uh, is the FDR X3000, something that I bought several years ago and still outperforms the newest GoPro because you've got the higher bit rate and also uh, absolutely amazing optical stabilization. But people keep continuing to buy GoPros. Uh, that's fine, nothing wrong with that. Anybody who'd like to check out some of the video out of this little guy can check out my drone video or check out the Costa Rica travel video I did. All the aerials are shot with this. So uh, are we done yet? Not exactly. I did buy more stuff. Uh, did I win the lottery or am I stupid? Well, I didn't win the lottery. You probably heard that they've come out with some gimbals that are a little bit more conducive to the traveler lighter weight, smaller form factor. You can strap them onto your bag without too much trouble. Anyway, um, at the time of my purchase decision, the three most popular travel gimbals that I was looking at were the Ronin SC and the Weeble Lab gimbals, the original and the one that handles a little bit more weight. Uh, I ended up actually going with the Ronin SC because I, the way I, I, I like the way it felt. Nothing against the Weeble um, gimbals. So because I fancy myself a travel filmmaker and photographer, mm, even though I haven't been doing a lot of traveling lately, uh, my intention is to travel with my equipment. So my goal is to be able to get all my equipment into one bag. And that bag is usually the Low Pro Pro Tactic. Uh, the bag that um, a certain YouTuber used to use before he came out with his own bag. But I love the bag, it's a fantastic bag and I can't see myself ever uh, changing that bag up. I love that bag. Anyway, I typically bring along a smaller bag and that's where this bag comes into play. It is the Manfrotto uh, 10 speed. Wish I could take credit for purchasing this bag. Um, actually, I'm happy I didn't have to take credit for purchasing this bag because my wonderful girlfriend Marmar bought this for me for Christmas. Thank you, Mar. Um, you're so generous. Um, it's one of these new style bags. Like a lot of new bags, you have an insert inside that you can pull out that's sort of the photography part of it and then it kind of converts it into like a regular messenger bag that you can use for what have you. Anyway, the bag that I used to use was a sling bag uh, that I was gifted by my friend Mark, uh, which is a specific photography sling bag, but didn't carry all my lenses, which this one does and it also has a strap on the bottom for holding a small tripod, which is Fantastic. So this is more uh, a strategy than it is just a piece of equipment that will probably make the biggest difference in my work and uh, just make the work more pleasurable. Before I sign off, <laughs> I'd like to apologize to those dedicated viewers who've been actually waiting for me to post a video. I have been busy, but I've also been pretty lazy. Uh, there's just no excuse. I should be posting more consistently. And those of you who have subscribed uh, deserve that from me. And those of you who are new to the channel, uh, please show your support and subscribe. Hit that notification bell or shoot me a like. If not, that's fine too. Until next time, keep working to make your chosen idea a reality. Peace. To go full frame or not to go full frame? To go full frame or not to go full frame? To go full frame or not? To go full frame or to go full frame? The question 
for the ages. To go full frame or not to go full frame? At least that is to go full frame or not to go full frame? That is the question.